Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Kafka, how to install it and how to use it in some way. Kafka is this kind of event streaming soft, uh, software. It's very similar to RabbitMQ, but the different, uh, difference is that in RabbitMQ you put something into a queue and then pick it out. In the case of Kafka, you write to a Kafka topic and the topic is then stored for an amount of time. So if you say that you have a retention of a week, then the messages will be stored for a week before they are removed. So any consumer can go in and read this topic either from the beginning or read it as it is. So that's the difference between these two technologies and Kafka is pretty cool when it comes to gathering statistics, logs and similar things where you have a lot of rights and you have different consumers that are interested in this material. So you can push them to different topics and so on. Um, so let's switch over to my screen here and here I have a bunch of Debian uh, hosts, three Debian hosts and I'm gonna create a production ready Kafka environment with three different so keepers which is a push way of handling distributed systems. So they will keep track on where the different brokers are, Kafka brokers, and then we will install three Kafka brokers. So we have redundancy in different uh, ways and if you want more Kafka brokers you just add more brokers but you need at least three uh, so keepers in order to really have have redundancy in your uh, system so you can put t take one server down and then bring up another one so let's see here we, we'll start with installing Java because everything is running Java so we'll install Java and I also install net tools because that is uh, uh, also good to have when you are working with um, networking. So I will do that on all my three hosts here. So I have Java available for installation. And we are back. Now I've installed Java and Nettos. I'm gonna go into my slash opt directory where you have your optionals installed and we will install Kafka there. So I will download Kafka from the Apache homepage and I'm gonna use 3.7 here. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, unpack that and it's using um, the other version number here, 2.13, that's the Scala version. So there is a 2.12 um, as well. And I will also create a link here. So Kafka is linked in um, to the Kafka directory. So I have this version linked to a specific uh, directory. So I can use the same one if I download new versions, I just change the link up. Uh, and then I want to go into the configuration file of SoulKeeper here. So conf uh, Kafka config SoulKeeper properties. And in here, I want a new data there. So I will just, um, um, or I will just mark that out and then I will copy some configuration in here. I'm gonna do some small changes here in the IP department because I have new IPs for this run. And the things I will put in here, and I'm gonna do a, a write-up of this as well, is something for this data there. So I will put that in my optional directory as well. Optional data soapkeeper, a tick time, that's how often it will update, so every two seconds. Uh, initial limit is when it's looking for um, new servers, it will do that 10 times and then it will do five sync attempts. So that's uh, how it will look for other servers. And I have said that my server one, which is this one, uh, will be at uh, IP1 and then we, 2 is at uh, 42 and 3 is at 44. It's very important that these IDs are correct. So we will specify which one is the one and it's important that it has the right address. So uh, next up we will create a Kafka user uh, and we will also not create um, 
home directory for this Kafka user and we will not allow login for this user and we will add it to the group Kafka. So now we have a group and a Kafka user. And then I will create this data dir for Zookeeper and I will also create this my ID. And here I will put one for this server because I know this is IP41. So if we uh, uh, address show here, we will see that this is 641. So this is my, I, my ID one. So it's important that that ID in that file is the same as we put in our properties uh, for Zookeeper. And then I will uh, go to the op directory again and I will change ownership of this data directory to Kafka and the group Kafka uh, recursively. And then I will go into the uh, Kafka directory because it's a link. So I need to change all the things in that directory to be owned by Kafka as well because it will write to this directory. Next up, I need to figure out where my Java is stored. And on Debian, I can run this command where I echo out read link for the Java binary and find where it actually is stored its um, libraries. So it will do a sed uh, search there for bin Java. And then I get this out. So I actually find that it, it, this is where it's stored on an Ubuntu, uh, Debian system. And then I will create a service file for uh, Kafka Zookeeper. So in the lib systemd system, I will create this service file. And I will put in all of this into it, a lot of data. So it's a unit, I describe it as Apache Zookeeper server Kafka, the Zookeeper documentation could be found there. It requires network and remote FS, and the service is type simple. It uses user and group Kafka. The environment variable I want to set is Java home, and this is where we found this Java home directory. We want to execute the Kafka bin zookeeper service start with the properties file that we created earlier. And when we stop it, we have another shell script here for stopping, and it's a multi-user target. So now we have created that. Uh, we can reload our daemons like that. System control reload daemons, start Kafka Zookeeper service, and we can check the status of it. So now we have Kafka running here. Uh, we got an error. So let's see here what that was all about. If we want to check this, we can go into the logs directory because it writes logs files here. We can less the server log here and see what it's actually telling me. And here it says that it hasn't found the other two servers. And that's expected because we haven't installed those yet. So I will install the other ones using the same script here in order to get a Zookeeper running on those as well. And we are back and I have done that update. One thing that we could look at as well for the Zookeeper, which is important is the client port here is of course uh, the port that is usually used, but there's mapped client connections. This is important to know that currently we have not set any limit for this, but in a production environment, in order to not get it too confused and, and and have a bunch of services that could uh, DDoS it, it could be good to actually set this to a limit. So per IP, you might maybe want maximum of 100 connections or so, uh, just to make it a little bit more safe. So let's continue here with the installation. Now we need to start up Kafka as well, and we will create a service for Kafka. So in this, uh, configuration which is just Kafka service in the uh, system, D direc system directory. Here we will create this Kafka, it has this description, the documentation can be found here, same remote target and uh, so and it also require should be run after Zookeeper of course and it's type simple, user Kafka, groups Kafka, same environment we had different start scripts here, but and we will use this server properties uh, file. And we also want to use a multi-user target. 
So now we need to update this server user file, of course. So let's go in there. And in here, first off, we need to know that this broker ID is unique. So for this one, I will have zero, then one, then two for the other two. And then I also wanted to listen to the port 1992. This is default, so we don't really need to set it here, but I will do that anyway. Uh, it will use um, three number of network threads, IO threads eight. It's fine, could be changed in a production environment. If you have a lot of traffic, those could be uh, changed. Then here with the log directory, I want to have that into opt. Uh, data Kafka logs, uh, number of default petitions for uh, uh, in here. I want that to be 50 for all the brokers uh, and the thread uh, br threads for recovery. One at the moment, that's just fine. If you want to have more uh, in the future, then just change this up. Recovery is not something that is you done that much. So I think one thread there is fine. Then we have a couple of internal metadata structures and I want these also to have 50 petitions. So we will have replications for those and scale those over different. Oh, uh, no, this is a replication factor. We want to have this at three and the same uh, for the transition and minimum here we can set to two. So this is how many hosts they should be replicated over. Uh, so this partition up here is for the internal uh, system here, the metadata and so on. How many petitions they should have, uh, how many parts they should be split into. So 50 is a pretty good number. These are how many hosts they need to be uh, located on. And we have three hosts, so we will change that up to three. Um, then down here I'm not sure if there is anything more yeah this log reten uh, retention hours this is a week uh, 168 hours you could change this to a higher number or a lower number depending on your use case of course um, so let's see what we had more down here um, yeah so caper timeout and it will use the local time, uh, so keeper. Here you can put in all the hosts, of course. So in our case, we could say that we want to use Kafka one, and then comma Kafka two, and same port here, and then uh, Kafka three, and the same port. So now it will connect to all three of those hosts. And yeah, that's everything that we need to change in this file. So there is a couple of uh, configuration changes there. We will do the, the same as we did earlier. We will reload uh, the daemon, start the Kafka service and see that it is up and running. Uh, and it should be just coming up and working for us. So what I can do now is start another console here on my local machine and run this Docker daemon here. And here I need to change up a couple of uh, IPs as well. 41, uh, 42, and 44. So the Docker daemon, I will run uh, inter uh, interactive here. I will add a host, Kafka1, and say that this had this IP. I will add another host, Kafka2, which has this IP and the third host uh, with this IP. And that is because in the Docker environment, I need to connect to those hosts in order to uh, set it up. And if I don't have the actual name of them, it will not connect correctly to the services for some reason. Uh, and then I will uh, expose this port 8080. I will have this dynamic configure enabled true. And then I want this Proventus uh, Labs Kafka UI. It's a pretty nice uh, UI for Kafka. So you can see what is actually going on. Uh, I will configure the other two hosts of Kafka here as well. And then we will look into this GUI. And we are back and this is the UI for, U UI for Kafka. Uh, and here we can set up a new cluster. So let's call this my test cluster. I want to use the Kafka ER org that we specified earlier, 1992 for a port. 
And then we can do the same for number two, 1992. And we will do the same for the third host as well, 1992. And all of those should be running now. We don't want it to be in read-only. We want to be able to add things to this. And the other ones here we can have trust store, authentication, schema registry we could use to Kafka connect. We can have KSQL DB and metrics, but I'm going to do it simple now and just validate this and then submit. So now it will set this up and connect to this host. Uh, it will take a little while before it actually figures out what version and so on is available here. Uh, if we look at the brokers, it hasn't really found those yet either. So it will take a little while for this to get up and running. So now it has connected. We can see that we have three brokers. We can see with which version, 3.7 IV4. That is with running at the moment. We can go in here and create a new topic. I want to create a topic called RSS log because I want to store those. I could have 50 replicas, minimum sync, and a replication factor of uh, three. So I want at least two replicas synced and I want three of them. I could keep these for yeah, normal amount or you can just choose how many weeks and so on you want here or uh, a val another valid number. Uh, or we can also set the maximum usage of the uh, disk space. And when we create this topic, yes, and now that we have started the Kafka or created the Kafka topic, we can create the consumer for it. So I'm gonna start a consumer here on one of the hosts. So I'm gonna go to the opt Kafka binary directory. And in here we have Kafka consumer. So I'm gonna run Kafka console consumer with the bootstrap server of local host and the Kafka port. I'm gonna run from the beginning on the topic syslog. And this will not say anything at the moment because we don't have any logs uh, put in there. So the syslog is no, have no data in it, so it's empty at the moment. So what we want to do now is install syslog or syslog Kafka. So that's an extra plugin uh, for the rsync uh, syslog, which is running in, uh, in Debian. So I'm gonna install that on all the machines here. And then I'm gonna create a new configuration file. So rsyslog has a configuration file, which is etc rsyslog.conf, where we can do things. But I'm gonna go into the rsyslog.d directory, where more plugins files could be added. I'm gonna add a file called kafka.conf. And .conf is important. You need to say that this is a configuration file or else the uh, syslog.conf will not point to it. So it will take star.conf and read in. And in that, we will say that I want to load the module om Kafka, and I want to forward logs to the Kafka brokers, om Kafka, the topic rsyslog, and use the broker localhost at the moment. And I want to do that on all these uh, machines here. Same goes for the second one. And we add that code here. And the third one. Let's do that as well. Uh, configuration is not that heavy, so it will go fast. Mark the data. There we go. And we write that. So now we have all of them configured. If I now do a syslog restart on this machine, so I do system control restart syslog and uh, Sys control status syslog, and I can see that it's restarted and no errors. So I'm gonna do that on all three of them. No errors there, and no errors there. So when we're done that, if we go over to this, we see that we get a lot of output. So everything that is done on the systems are no, now logged to Kafka. So now that we have set up our syslog in order to write to uh, Kafka, we can also look at how it looks in the GUI. So in here, we can now see that we have this test cluster, we have three brokers, we have 100 positions, uh, and we have two topics. So it has created an internal topic as well. If we look at the brokers, we can see here how much disk usage we have here, about 13 kilobytes, so not that much at the moment. We can see uh, which, uh, what kind of skew we have, so where there are more replicas and where there are less replicas and so on. 
If we look at uh, topics here, we can see that we have this consumer offset, which is one topic that is internal to this. There is two of them that could be used uh, for different uh, purposes. And this is taking up about four kilobytes, so not that much. We have this RSYS log, RSYS log that we have put up is currently 67 messages. We have uh, 41 kilobytes here. And if we look into the consumers, we can see that we have one consumer running here with one number of members, number of topics and so on. So we could find a bunch of things in this GUI here in order to look at what is happening in our cluster. So this was what I wanted to cover today. Kafka can be used for a bunch of different things like writing logs to a disk, of course. You can consume them later for either metric statistics or finding issues and so on. You can use it for statistical purposes, of course, writing a bunch of statistical data in order to uh, do different kind of calculations on that. You could use it just as a normal event log where you write in a bunch of different data and maybe even store all of it in a long log that you later on have a consumer that try, uh, writes it into a database in order to have everything stored for later use. So if you want to check something, you run a, a consumer on the whole log into a database, do different um, operations on it and maybe read it again. So the good thing of having this as a log where everything is stored is that you can read it, in it, read it in, in different ways in order to get more or less information depending on your use case. So event streaming or event sourcing is really cool as a concept and can be used for a bunch of different things. Um, but this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Are you using event sourcing for anything in your business? Please leave a comment in the comment section down below or if you have any other comments or suggestions. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.